Breaking news. On March 8th, Japan's Kato announced it will cease excavator production in China following the footsteps of American brands such as John Deere and Case, marking yet another exit from the domestic market. According to Kato, the reason is a downturn in the Chinese market, driven by the low price sales and fierce competition among domestic machinery. Recently, HP and Dell have both to register their companies in China. Mitsubishi has withdrawn, Toshiba has closed its home appliance business in Dalian City. Even Samsung, Apple and Toyota have all withdrawn and moved to Southeast Asia or India. In recent years, amid China prolonged economic downturn and geopolitical tensions, Sino-Japanese automotive companies have been reducing production or even exiting the Chinese market. According to Nikkei News on March 12th, Nissan plans to negotiate with its joint venture partner in China to reduce its production capacity by 30%, equivalent to an annual reduction of 500,000 vehicles. Currently, Nissan produces about 1.6 million vehicles annually in China. Nissan operates eight factories jointly with Dongfen Motor Corporations in China. These are scattered across Hubei, Henan and other regions. Nissan plans to restructure these factories using some of the ones with less demand as production bases for exporting electric vehicles to surrounding Asian countries. At the same time, Honda also plans to reduce its capacity in China by 20%, with annual production reduced to around 1.2 million vehicles. Honda is discussing production cuts with local partners and has informed major suppliers to reduce output. Honda has two joint ventures in China, one with GAC Group and the other with Dongfeng Motor Corporation Group, with a total annual production capacity in China of 1.5 million vehicles. Data shows that in 2023, Nissan's annual sales in China, including passenger and commercial vehicles, were 790,000 units. This is a year-on-year decrease of 24% and falls below the 1 million mark for the first time in 14 years. In 2018, Nissan sales in China reached 1.56 million vehicles, ranking first among Japanese car manufacturers. Currently, the capacity utilization rate is only about half of the peak period. In February this year, Nissan sales in China were 42,000 units, down 30% year-on-year. Honda faces a similar situation. Since reaching a peak in China with sales of 1.6 million vehicles in 2020, sales have been declining continuously. In 2023, sales in China were 1.2 million units, a year-on-year decrease of 10%. In addition, in February this year, Honda sales in China were 45,500 units, down 39% year-on-year. The decline rate is clearly increasing. In November 2023, due to sluggish sales of gas-powered vehicles, Guangzhou Honda had already laid off about 900 second event employees. This is about 7% of its total 13,000 employees. A Honda spokesperson pointed out at the time that due to reduced production, contracts for second event employees were terminated. At the same time, Toyota sales in China last year decreased by 2% down 1.9 million vehicles compared to the same period of the previous year. Toyota sells electric vehicles such as the BZ4X and BZ3 in China. The plans to strengthen the supply of plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs. In addition, Toyota has also initiated production cuts and layoffs in China. In November 2023, Toyota and FAW Group's joint venture, FAW Toyota, in Tianjin had large-scale production cuts with some production lines even shut down entirely. Toyota's other joint venture, GAC Toyota, had already laid off about 1,000 employees in July 2023. On October 24, 2023, Mitsubishi Motors announced the cessation of automotive production in China due to extreme market changes in the Chinese automotive industry. They cited an unexpected accelerated shift towards electric vehicles, significant changes in consumer brand choices, and the company's failure to achieve sales targets despite the launch of a new model, in December 2022. Consequently, it decided to stop automotive production in China and sell its stake in GAC Mitsubishi Motors to GAC Group, completely withdrawing from the Chinese market. Mitsubishi's production shutdown in China marks another significant withdrawal of a major Japanese company from China, following Sony and Daiking. Previously, Honda had stated that it was considering building supply chains outside of China to reduce reliance on the CCP. 
Mazda also said it is considering relocating its production capacity out of China. Additionally, on August 7th last year, Japanese materials company Tejing announced that it would withdraw from its automotive material business in China and concentrate its resources in North America. Japan's Isatan Mitsukoshi Holdings also announced at the end of December last year that it would close two department stores in China by the end of February 2024, one of them being Isatan Tianjin. Japan's largest tire manufacturer, Bridgestone, also announced on February 27th that it terminated its commercial vehicle tire business at its Shenyang factory on January 26, 2024, and closed the factory on February 29th. The company also plans to terminate the production and sales of commercial vehicle tires in the first half of 2024. On January 15th, the Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry in China announced the survey results of members' companies conducted from November 23rd to December 13th last year. It shows that over half of the companies were dissatisfied with the current business environment in China and their prospects for 2024 are less optimistic. When asked about their investment in China in 2023, 25% of the companies said that their investment had decreased compared to 2022, while 23% said that they had not invested. The main reasons why Japanese companies have a negative outlook on continued investments in China are due to the stagnant Chinese economy, uncertain prospects, and concerns about the new version of the counter-espionage law issued in July 2023, which gives the Chinese government greater leeway to crack down on foreign companies. In response, Japanese Chinese commentator Xi Ping told the Epoch Times the biggest problem for Japanese companies operating in China is political risk. Just as the CCP suddenly banned Japanese seafood products, you never know when something will go wrong and there's always danger. Japanese companies should realize that sending employees to China puts their human rights and lives at risk. This year, the business market in China will deteriorate further. And what Japanese companies should consider now is not the issue of investment, but withdrawal. Not only Japanese companies, but also European and American companies are increasingly finding it difficult to operate in China. In September 2023, the European Union Chambers of Commerce in China and the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai separately released reports on doing business in China. Both reports pointed out that for Western companies, they are finding it increasingly difficult to adapt to China's business environment. Although China values foreign investment, it prioritizes national security. Nearly two-thirds of European companies surveyed in China believe that the increasingly complex laws and regulations in China have made business development difficult. The conference board, a global business association and think tank, released a survey in November 2023 highlighting that CEOs of multinational corporations in China are losing confidence in China. The survey included 35 CEOs mainly from American and European companies in China, and the results show that their confidence index in China dropped from 72 six months ago to 54 in the second half of the year. The organization also found that 40% of the CEOs surveyed expect capital investment to decrease, and almost the same number of CEOs expect to lay off employees in the next six months, compared to only 9% in the first half of last year. Elizabeth Brawl, a columnist at Foreign Policy and a senior associate fellow at the European Leadership Network, told Voice of America that for Western companies, China is becoming an increasingly difficult environment. She states that the problem lies in its unpredictability, which makes companies worried about becoming targets of retaliation by the CCP government. She said any Western company can be targeted by various government crackdowns related to the espionage legislation. Also, whenever the Chinese government wants to retaliate against the Western government, there is a risk that it will use a Western company operating in China as a proxy target. That's very easy because what can the company do? It can do nothing. In recent years, not only Japanese companies have withdrawn from the Chinese market, but also American, German, and even Chinese local private enterprises. Since 2023, 10 major globally renowned companies have announced their withdrawal from China. These companies include Canon, Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, Nikon, Amazon, LinkedIn, Mint's Software Development Center, and Astellas Pharma. They have relocated their supply chains to Thailand, the Philippines, or back to their home countries, directly affecting tens of thousands of Chinese employees. In November last year, 
Gallup also announced its withdrawal from China. Gallup is one of the world's most well-known polling companies and has a branch in China that oversees education and training. The Financial Times reported that operating in China has become increasingly difficult for American consulting firms, not only due to the economic downturn in China, but also because Chinese national security agencies are intensifying their scrutiny and surveillance of consulting firms. American consulting firm Bain and Company, Mintz Group, and Capvision have all been raided and searched by Chinese national security personnel. The report stated that as Gallup withdrew from China, other multinational consulting firms are also scaling back their operations in China. According to Reuters, on March 12, three informed sources revealed that Li Chang does not intend to hold a meeting with visiting foreign CEOs at the upcoming China Development Forum in late March. Amid worsening market sentiment, this may further deteriorate the confidence of foreign companies in investing in China. Since 2000, the forum has been held annually at the Diao Yu Tai State Guest House in Beijing, traditionally serving as an important opportunity for global CEOs to meet and discuss foreign investments with Chinese policymakers. Apple CEO Tim Cook and Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio were frequent attendees of the forum. One of the most important parts of the forum is the meeting between the Chinese Premier and corporate representatives. However, three sources said that although Li Chang still plans to attend this year's forum activities on March 24th to 25th, he will not meet the global CEO as usual. Toshihiro Ueda, Vice Chairman of the Japan Chambers of Commerce in China, said that his move is clearly not a favourable signal. Max Zenglein, Chief Economist at the Berlin-based Think Tank Metrics, said that if this news is confirmed, China will miss an opportunity to boost the confidence of foreign investors. On March 27, 2023, shortly after taking office as Premier Li Chang met with foreign participants attending the high-level China Development Forum in Beijing. During the discussions, Li promised that regardless of changes in the international stage, China will firmly expand its openings up to the outside world and stated that the doors will become wider and wider. Since then, Li has repeatedly emphasized the importance of opening up to foreign business leaders in events held last year and this year. On February 23rd, Li chaired an executive meeting of the State Council of the CCP. Li said that foreign investments is an important force driving the common prosperity and development of the Chinese and world economies. We must stabilize foreign investment as an important focus of this year's economic work consolidate the confidence of foreign investments in China, and improve the quality and level of trade and investment cooperation. Despite Li Chang's repeated calls for foreign investment, foreign capital continues to withdraw from China in large numbers. Data from the Ministry of Commerce and the State Administration of Foreign Exchange shows that in January 2024, China's foreign direct investment decreased by 11.7% year-on-year to 113 billion yuan. However, Chinese government data often conceals a true situation, so it is speculated that the actual situation may be worse. Foreign companies have been trying to coordinate in hopes that Chinese leaders will provide more responses to issues of concern. This includes issues on broader counter-espionage laws, raids on consulting and due diligence firms, exit bans, and so on. If the press conference with the Premier is cancelled after the two sessions of the CCP and if the communication opportunities between foreign companies and the Premier are cancelled again, the confidence of foreign companies investing in China may be further undermined. Not only are foreign companies lacking confidence in investing in China, but domestic capital as well. Waves of layoffs and unemployment are sweeping across China. According to Chinese media reports, in 2023, private fixed asset investment reached 25 trillion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 0.4%. Looking at registration types, investment by Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan companies decreased by 2.7% year-on-year. Private enterprises decreased by 5% and individual businesses decreased by 3.3%. Private fixed asset investment accounted for only 50% of the national fixed asset investment, the lowest point since the publication of private investment data in 2012. The Economist magazine pointed out that Chinese investors have lost confidence in the Chinese economy. The wealth and financial investments of wealthy Chinese are declining, and much Chinese capital is flowing out. 
Those who cannot bypass Chinese capital controls are turning to safer market funds or are flooding into funds listed in China that have foreign stocks. While foreign companies are exiting China, withdrawing funds from the country is actually becoming more challenging. According to the Financial Times on March 15th, U.S. institutions with private equity funds invested in China are facing difficulties in withdrawing investments as the regulators tighten and geopolitical tensions escalate. Four U.S. public pension funds that have allocated over $4 billion to private equity funds focused on China said they are preparing to delay redemptions of investments nearing their 10-year term. Alan Waldrop, director of private equity investment at the Alaska Permanent Fund, said China has been a place where you could deploy capital, but getting it out is harder. Now, it is a much more severe issue. Over the past decade, U.S. private equity funds have been among the most active investors in China's thriving consumer and internet industries. Even amid the outbreak of the U.S.-China trade war, the investment frenzy continued. However, in 2022, Beijing's data security review of companies seeking overseas listings led to the abrupt halt of New York IPOs for hundreds of Chinese firms. Data from financial insight companies Crunchbase shows that U.S. investment in China private equity and venture capital declined by 68% in 2022 compared to the previous year. While the U.S. Federal Reserve's interest rate hike has had an impact on U.S. IPOs, Beijing's restriction on Chinese companies listing overseas have played an equal or even larger role. For example, in July 2021, Chinese ride-hailing giant Didi faced domestic regulatory scrutiny after listing in the U.S., leading to a suspension of new user registrations during the review period. While overseas investors do not need to make immediate decisions, they realize that with more and more private equity funds reaching the ends of their approximate 10-year term, the risk in the coming years will further intensify. A senior executive of a U.S. public pension fund with over a dozen Chinese private equity investment projects expressed concerns that the inability to withdraw investments will be worrisome and extending the investment cycle would affect the future deployment of the fund. However, most industry insiders can hardly find a better solution than extending the terms of private equity investments. Amanderson, a partner of private equity placement agency, Monument Group, based in Hong Kong, said that investors actually do not have a lot of choices and can only continue to invest.